Today we're going to look at getting started with RAD Dataform. RAD Dataform is part of the Telerik RAD controls for Silverlight WPF Control Suite for .NET XAML development. In this video we will dive into Visual Studio 2010 and begin with File New Project and discover what the RAD Dataform control has to offer. With RAD Dataform you are able to display and edit arbitrary business objects in a form layout with ease. Let's go ahead and get started. So here we are, we're back inside of Visual Studio 2010, and we're just going to create a new project by going File, New, Project, and we're going to select Silverlight, and then RAD Control Silverlight Application. I'm just going to go ahead and I'm going to give it a name of RAD Dataform TTV, which stands for Telerik TV, and then I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to press OK. Now that I press OK, I'm going to host the Silverlight application in a website, and I'm also going to be using Silverlight 5 for this demo. Next, we press OK. So the next screen that we see is the Project Configuration Wizard. On the Project Configuration Wizard, it's simply asking us which component do we want to use. I know that this is actually contained in the Telerik.Windows.Controls.Data component, so I'm simply going to place a check here. Once I place a check here, you'll see that it automatically added the other components that's necessary to use this control. After that's in place, we're going to go ahead and we're going to hit the Finish button. Now that our project is finished spinning up, let's just go over to Solution Explorer and let's see what it actually added for us. So under Solution Explorer, we can see that it automatically added Telerik.Windows.Data, Telerik.Windows.Controls.Input, Telerik.windows.controls.data and Telerik.windows.controls. We can also see under our user control that it added the Telerik XML namespace for us as well. So as I said in the intro, the RAD data form can be bound to an object or a collection of objects. So what we're going to do now is we're actually going to create an employee class and then bind that to our RAD data form control. So I'm going to simply go back to my project and I'm going to do right click and then add and then class and I'm just going to name this class employee and once that's in place I'm going to add several properties. So the first one that I've added is a first name and then we have a last name, an occupation, of course these are all strings, and then we get into some other different types. So we see a starting date which is a date time, which means that we're actually going to be able to select a date from a dropdown. We have the bool is married, which is going to transform into a checkbox control. We have another int that is the salary, and then we have an enum for our gender where they can select male or female. So we'll see that the rad data form creates its fields automatically based on the type of the corresponding properties. So let's go ahead and add in some sample data now. So I'm going to simply add in an observable collection and let's just go ahead and fix our using here. And once I have an observable collection, the class is going to be employee and then the method is going to be named get employees. So we see here we have a couple of different employees that's going to add for us. And after that's in place, we're going to simply return that observable collection of employees. We can now go back to our main page.xaml and begin tying some of this in. So I'm going to begin with Telerik and then rad data form. And then I'm just going to go ahead and I'm going to give this a name of data form one. And I'll give it a header of employee. And that's all that I'll add. So now once that's in place, we can see on our designer that it automatically added this for us. So we see we have our first button, our backwards, forwards, and then our last. We also have CRUD operations to create, update, delete, or add. And if we scroll down to the bottom here, you'll see we already have our buttons for OK and for canceling. So let's go ahead and tie in our data to this control. So we'll go back to our main page.xaml.cs and we're going to simply go underneath our initialize component and we're going to type in this dot data form one dot item source is equal to our employee dot get employees. 
So now if we go back to our application and we just go ahead and run it, we're going to see that now we have a data form and its fields and properties have automatically been added for us. So we have our first name, last name, occupation, and then the rest of our data. And as you see we have our strings and then we have the date provided here. The boolean was converted into a checkbox. We have the salary and then we have a gender which is actually going to be a drop-down list. So we can navigate through our items with this button, with our next button, or we can go back to the beginning. We can also look over here and we can add a new item by clicking this button. So once we click add, of course it's looking for three strings here, and then under the starting date we could give this something maybe a little bit more relevant, and we'll just do 2012. If we click the drop down here, then you can see we could select our date. Um, the is married is now a checkbox, so we could either add that. The salary here is looking for a numeric input. If we tried to type in something that was not numeric, we will see that it will not take it. And down here at the bottom we see salary input is not in a correct format. And then our enum is actually this drop down combo box where they could select male or female. And of course we can always hit cancel here to remove that. But if we go back to our current employee that we're on, we could also edit this information as well as we could delete it. So thanks again for watching the first part of the series. We have two more videos coming up after this. And also please tune in to tv.telerik.com for more videos and check out blogs.telerik.com for the latest news and announcements.